behind the scenes uh, of Odeo. So, I guess that uh, some of you don't know what uh, Odeo is. Odeo has been my side uh, project, or I should say now my side business, uh, for the past uh, five years already. And I think I'm going to leave my modest nature a little bit behind. It is one of the best Laravel applications uh, that, uh, that I made. Uh, whenever I learn something new and it is applicable to, uh, to Odeer, I use it uh, in Odeer. It's a, it's a little bit my playground as well. And what does it do? It's an all-in-one monitoring tool. And I'm going to uh, showcase it to you in a bit. Uh, and you can find it at the URL Odeer. App. Now, before showing it to you, I want to um, uh, share the tech stack, and there are really no surprises here. Uh, Odeer uses like the best of the best uh, in um, in my mind, so it runs on PHP 8 or 2. Since last week, uh, the whole infrastructure behind Odeer is running on Laravel 10. We use LiveWire for our UI. Uh, we already are on best v2 and I added a little test yesterday with that awesome arc plugin to uh, know for sure that there are no DD statements and no dump or ray statements in, uh, in our code when we push to production. The entire UI is uh, styled with uh, Tailwind and for the regular parts of our infrastructure those servers are provisioned with Forge and for our high traffic endpoints they are managed by Vapor. So yeah, Odeer yeah, uses like the best of the, uh, the ecosystem. And in this talk, I want to show Odeer a little bit to you. And uh, after you know how uh, the product works more or less, um, I want to show you how uh, the code is structured. Now Odeer is a paid product, so I can't show you everything uh, in that. There are some trade secrets in there, but the general structure that I can share. So let's take a look at Odeer itself. So here is the, uh, the homepage, so the all-in monitoring tool for your entire website. And you can see that Odeer is used by some pretty big brands, HBO, so that company that produces all those awesome TV shows, they use Odeer, the Laravel team itself. If you're a gamer, you probably know IGN. And of course, we dog food it at, uh, at Spassi as well. And as you can see, thank you. Thank you. I don't have a hat, but I appreciate the applause. Um, so yeah, you can see that we already ran yeah, a lot of checks. And uh, yeah, I wish I would say we don't send out any notifications because all our clients have no downtime. But yeah, sorry, uh, their, uh, their applications that we monitor, it, it goes down and we already sent like 7 million uh, notifications. There's one site in our database that has gone offline and online back again for 50,000 times. So I hope that client will get it fixed uh, someday. <laughs> okay, let's go and take a look at the UI of uh, Wadir. And it's pretty simple. So this is the actual account uh, for Spassi. You can see that we monitor the whole of Flare here. And adding a site is pretty simple. So let's start and monitor the website of uh, Laracom uh, India. And you can see that here I can uh, choose the checks that I want to perform. I'm just going to uh, use the defaults now. Then I can add the site and it's probably a little bit below here. So here if I search for Laracom and then India, it should pop up, but I'm on a bad network maybe. Ah yeah, there it is. Ah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was already monitoring it. I forgot to delete this one from my uh, um, from my test run. So you can see that we can already see that it's up, and after a while, you can see also uh, see the performance here. If I click on that site, you can see that the checks that we're performing, and you can see that we already have uh, uptime for the last uh, a couple of days uh, monitored. Also the performance, and of course. Uh, also the certificate itself, because without a valid certificate, uh, your website uh, will seemingly be uh, offline. Now, if there are any problems with your site, we can uh, send a uh, notification. And in team notifications, you can uh, configure the general um, uh, notification preferences. 
So for the Spassi team, we sent uh, we sent web hooks to our dashboard. We have a couple of Slack channels that we can set up. Of course, here I can add. Uh, like uh, other channels as well and also send a mail and um, uh, specify which events should be sent to that. So to showcase the rest of the checks that ODR can perform, I'm going to use a different site. Normally the UI is very snappy but like I said I'm on a slower hotspot. So let's take a look at uh, the checks of my own website. So fake.dev Come on, internet, you can do this. Hi, right, Dev, and here I'm using uh, all the checks, so uptime. And you can see with performance that we have a beautiful graph with uh, how uh, that the website is performing speed-wise. Uh, we also have an API to get all of that information. Um, I've talked about uptime performance and certificate health. These are the things that most uptime trackers do, but then Odeo goes much farther. And the first thing that it goes much farther with are the broken links. So we don't only uh, monitor the homepage of your application, but we actually crawl your entire site and we'll let you know when one of the pages is down or when, when you have a broken link uh, somewhere on your site. And then we say like, we found this broken link and we found it on this page, so you can either fix it or ignore it, or maybe download a report that you can send to somebody who should uh, fix it. We have a similar check uh, for mixed content. What is mixed content? Mixed content is the loading of an HTTP resource on an HTTPS website. Then your browser will display a big security warning. I think maybe modern browsers don't even show you the page at all, so your page is essentially down. And we can check uh, for those things as well. Another check that we uh, recently launched was the Lighthouse SEO check. Lighthouse is a tool by Google that can give you uh, core um, statistics about the SEO and the speed of your website. And it summarizes it in uh, four core uh, numbers, so one for performance, accessibility, best practices and SEO. And you want to keep these numbers as high as possible. Um, we run this check uh, daily, so whenever you do a deploy where these numbers go down, we can send you a notification as well. You should probably fix it. Um, we also showcase the, um, uh, the history of, uh, of the scores that you have. And below, we even show you the full report that uh, Lighthouse generates, and it's full with tips that you can do to improve your scores uh, even, even, even harder. Now, the two next checks are uh, also very handy, I think. Uh, we can uh, check the scheduled tasks, so the tasks that you registered in your kernel. Um, ask yourself, how do you know that those tasks are running? You're really hoping for that, that if you schedule something to be run every minute, that it runs every minute, right? Well, Odir can, uh, uh, can monitor that for you. How does that work? Um, well, there is a package called the Laravel Schedule uh, Monitor, and it has a sync uh, command uh, in it. And by uh, executing that sync command, we will actually uh, take a look at your kernel and will um, uh, push all of your jobs uh, to Odir. And we'll, we will also, in your Laravel application, send a ping after your task has been finished. And if we don't get that ping, yeah, then the task didn't complete and we can send you a warning. Now I want to demonstrate this. So this is all uh, live data from my own website. So here I have the source code of my website. I've, I'm going to schedule a super important uh, command here that should run every minute. I say it's super important, but there is actually nothing in here. And the um, deploy script that I use, I use uh, Envoy for that. There, I've added that sync command. So if I now uh, commit this change, I push this to main and I deploy the code. Deploy code like that. Oh, should authorize that. And if the internet gods uh, work, then we should see that super important command uh, bringing up. And if we're a little bit lucky, if we're like in the end of a minute, we'll also see the, the ping coming in. So this part of, uh, of our interface 
is, uh, is actually real time. Yeah, so here's the super important command. So we're waiting for the first ping. And yeah, maybe after a few seconds we'll see, okay, that is after the, the minute uh, has, has finished. I'll come back to I'll come back to this. I don't want to wait for this. All right. So the next uh, check that we have is application health. Application health is also a very interesting one. So we also uh, use a package uh, for that, and that's the Laravel health package. Laravel health is a package where which you can define certain checks that need to be performed by your application to determine if it is healthy. Um, so you install it in your application and it, it has a few checks out of the box like use disk space check and you can say like give me a warning when it is above 70% and give me like a failure of this check when it is above uh, uh, 90%. So as you can see it's easy to configure in your Laravel application and out of the box it uh, comes with a lot of interesting checks like for instance is Horizon uh, even, even running. Um, if I go back here, then you can see that uh, those checks are being run on the, um, on the Laravel application. In the Laravel application, it has a JSON endpoint with all the results, and we display all the results here and send you a notification when there is something down. But luckily, everything is, uh, is up here. So let's go back to the scheduled checks and see if we got a ping from the super important command. And yeah, we know that the super important command has uh, just run. Um, we also can perform uh, DNS checks to make sure that your DNS is in order. And we can even um, uh, see if there are things changed. So here my uh, A record uh, did, uh, did change. Yeah, so these are all the checks that it can perform, and as you can see, we go much far, farther than uh, than most similar uh, services. Um, and yeah, that's I think everything that I want to say about what Odir can do. So let's jump to the next part and talk about how all of this is structured. So yeah, Odir is not a small application. It's actually a couple of applications uh, in one because you can see like each check as like it's it's separate thing. So this is the actual source code of Odir. You can see that it's a Laravel application. And when I open this up, yeah, you have more or less the structure that uh, that you know and love. So we have an HTTP directory here with uh, every uh, 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 with controllers for every page on the uh, marketing website. We also have like a, a namespace for the uh, for the admin application itself. We also have uh, like an, um, an uh, directory for the API. If I open up a domain here, here is where like all of the businessy kind of logic lives. And this is a folder that you probably don't uh, don't have. So domain um, oriented structure is. Uh, used to break up a very big application into smaller parts and you probably saw some people uh, saying that yeah you should always stick to like the, the Laravel default uh, structure um, I think that is case to uh, that is uh, that is true to a certain extent I think there are like many variations of deviating a little bit from uh, the Laravel uh, default project structure for the domain-oriented uh, structure that I use, I don't consider that far away from the default Laravel structure because it's basically just introducing extra namespaces. There isn't like a package in, used in here like uh, that that is used to modularize the application. No, it is just uh, separate namespaces. So you you'll see that uh, models are. Uh, being saved somewhere else, but Laravel doesn't really care where, where models are saved. Um, now that I see this directory here, status page, I forgot to mention that uh, Odir also has uh, status pages, so not only monitoring of sites, but it can also just um, um, give status pages, render status pages, so your audience gets informed about the state of your applications. 
And the Laravel team uses that as well. So this is the status page at statuslaravel.com that, uh, that is powered by Odir. And here you can see that everything in the Laravel ecosystem is nice and green. And there was only a little bit of downtime a couple of days ago. This was probably something very minor. So when I'm working on that status page feature, then I can just open up this domain and everything uh, that I need to have for that feature is here. So here you can see the actions for, uh, for that feature. Uh, here we have the, the models uh, for that, the policies and, uh, and the rules. So whenever I'm working on that feature, I don't need to yeah, know all of the models. There are over 100 models uh, in, uh, in Odir. And I think that for me, it would be um, yeah, a little bit yeah, too much if I see everything at once. Now, if you don't mind having like a, a big uh, model structure, yeah, just stick with the, with the Laravel defaults. There's nothing wrong with that. I think there comes a little bit of personal preference into this as well. So you can see that for each of these, it's like a yeah, mini uh, Laravel application that is in there. Now, I've shown you that uh, Odir has a lot of uh, checks uh, built in. So let's open up the check domain itself. And you can see that it's also sort of a mini Laravel application here. But if I open up the checkers here, then you can see that for each check, we uh, also have like a subdirectory here. And if I open that up, then we got like another Laravel kind of structure here. So when I'm working on the application health check, then I just simply see all of the things that are associated with that check. And I don't need to know the whole of, uh, of this application. Um, at Spasi, for our bigger project, we uh, always structure our things in a domain-driven design. When we start up, start up with an application, um, we use the default Laravel structure, but as soon as we think it's a little bit uh, too much, yeah, we start refactoring uh, two domains. And there's nothing special about it. Like I've said, it's just moving namespaces around to a structure that you, uh, that you like uh, yourself. So that is what I want to show you about the code structure over there. I really want to showcase sometime, maybe when my career is finished, uh, what's in the code itself, because there are lots of interesting details uh, in there as well, but we'll have to wait for that until I retire. So if you want to try it here for yourself, there is a 10-day trial um, uh, for that, and there's no credit card needed. You get all of the features, um, and like I've said, uh, we also have a lot of documentation about this, because this was just a whirlwind tour of it. Um, now, especially for uh, Laracon India, we're running a promotion, uh, so you'll get a 50% discount for the first six months if you use that coupon code. I'll, I'll, thank you, thank you. Um, there were some of, of uh, the crowd here that already said that they were using Odir, which really blew my mind a little bit. I hope you're all happy with it, and for the ones that uh, will discover it, uh, I hope that you're happy with it. It's really a passion project of mine. So if you have any questions about it or, or missing any features, just walk up to me or send me a mail. And if it's something that would be useful for 80% of the users, I'll probably add it uh, very quickly. So you can uh, find it at odir.app. And these are the links of the two packages uh, that I mentioned. You can also use those two packages uh, without Odir. The Odir integration in those uh, packages is, uh, is optional. So thank you for your time, and that was it for me. Thanks.